Hello guys, in this short video I wanted to show you really quickly how ChatGPT can help you design system architecture for your applications. So let me show you here on the left I have a really simple application. I do it at my free time. It's basically to save everything that I want to read or watch for later like well links URLs to some articles to some YouTube videos um, and uh, basically what I want it to be uh, is a web extension for a browser for like Google Chrome or Safari or etc. And I want it to be able to synchronize automatically with other devices. You know, like Firebase, real-time database do or Fire, uh, Firestore. Um, so I decided I want to build it myself with WebSockets. And uh, because multiple devices can sync between each other, WebSocket fits really well. You can get updates in real time. But, uh, well, less talking. What about ChatGPT? First of all, keep in mind, multiple devices per user, we need to sync data. Here I have ChatGPT and our conversation with it. Basically, I try to describe my request to ChatGPT as detailed as possible, because as a language model, it requires you to be detailed more detailed it is, more correct answer you'll get back. So what I say here is like, hey, I have swelled on my front end and Node.js with Prisma and Postgres on the back end, and they communicate via WebSocket. So blah, 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 I want to use client side database to synchronize all the data of the user to it using like IndexedDB or Dixie.js, which is sits on top of IndexedDB and provide you promise-based um, real-time interface for IndexedDB. And basically I describe what else the app should do, how it should behave, in my opinion. Like, hey, I think it should work like this, but could you give me any recommendations? Like, could you highlight pros and cons of my approach and maybe some other options, alternatives. So let's see what ChatGPT answers. Here it basically describes everything that I told him or her, I'm not sure, or it, uh, in detail and uh, highlights like, hey, yeah, on front end used IndexedDB with some library that makes sense. Pros, users will have access offline anytime and they can save data or offline and then once it restore it will sync with the backend and other devices but cons it's like additional complexity because you will have two databases one in the client one on the backend and well it will always give you some troubles to to solve uh, on backend it's like blah 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 prisma postgres all good for websocket you can use Socket.io. So this is first recommendation from it. I mentioned that I want to use WebSockets somewhere here, uh, here, and it recommended the most popular library for WebSockets on JavaScript. Um, so this is plus one for ChatGPT. It understands what uh, we are doing and even recommends some stuff. Uh, also for data synchronization, it has an opinion that you will have uh, to well additional complexity like validation, synchronization and stuff. Imagine you do change on the same item on one device and on another device when both devices are back online, they need to sync. So and there might be a conflict. Which version should you use? Device A, device B, you know, such kind of questions that you should figure out. Um, also, it says like WebSocket provide bidirectional communication, uh, which is faster than HTTP requests usually. But cons, scaling them require more resources. You need backend server to be active all the time, comparing to HTTP when it can sleep when there are no requests. Uh, if you have WebSocket application, and especially if it sits somewhere here on the top right in your browser and it is always active, 
with WebSockets, it has to be connected to the backend 100% of the time. So uh, what it means is it will be more expensive for you to manage your servers. Your servers will be live all the time and you might need more instances of your backend servers. Uh, also, like you will need some load balancer and replication for database and horizontal scaling will be needed, especially for WebSockets. So something like Redis to notify different instances of your backend that some event happened, that one instance is not aware, but another instance is aware. Uh, so they need to share this knowledge. Um, yeah, so basically here it described that it understands the, the requests, understands my architecture, highlights pros and cons. And this is what I really like, especially if you are, you know, uh, new to web development and you have an idea of how it should work, but you're not sure if it's the right approach. So ChatGPT can help you highlight some holes in your logic, maybe, or some alternative solutions. Uh, what else? Then I ask it to write plant UML code um, for sequence diagram for this architecture. Sequence diagram is basically a, a diagram. I'll show you in a, in a second that shows you uh, what sequence of actions happens when, for example, user do request. It goes from front end to back end and back and so on. And plant UML code is a way to represent such a diagram as a code. So diagram as a code, very popular now. And it actually does. It gives back this nice code. I don't know plant UML, but I just, just heard that this is a way to represent diagrams as a code. And uh, it gave me the code, so let's copy it and let's go to plant UML website. Uh, this is not an advertisement. There are many ways, no way, plant UML. There are many ways of render this code and it's what I'm showing you is completely free, so you can do it. Uh, we go to online server here and just paste, paste uh, the code that we got from ChatGPT. Uh, and a moment later, you get this nice diagram. So let me zoom in and we'll see what ChatGPT understands about our architecture. On the left, you can see a user, that's us. When user updates user data, it can be links in the example of uh, my tab manager, uh, and user updates it on the front end. The front end then save updated data to the local database. You can see here it says index.db and also Dixie mentioned because it's a library to communicate with index.db in JavaScript. And once it's saved there, Frontend also will send WebSocket message to backend that is Node.js and Prisma. So you can see all the label here, labels, they all make sense, even with details. So I'm impressed. Then what backend does, it validates it, like was it correct uh, format of the data, uh, if any field missing or anything extra. And if it is correct, it saves everything to Postgres. Once it is saved, we need to notify other user devices like, hey, new link was saved or your tag was modified or some user settings was modified. So other uh, front-end uh, instances of, of this user, other devices that user uses also update their database. So uh, in WebSockets, there is a way to broadcast a message to multiple devices. Basically, you make like a room uh, and you put all the devices of same user to this room. And you just call this room like user ID, by user ID. Uh, so when you post a message to this room, all the devices are notified automatically. Nice, WebSocket is awesome and Socket.io is also cool. Uh, Socket.io, by the way, is not required to use now, 
just WebSocket implementation of on both front-end and back-end is more than enough. Uh, but okay, uh, back to broadcasting. So all the devices, back to front-end here, you can see this arrow. Now all the devices receive WebSocket message with updates. Like, hey, link is added. They update their local database and user can see updates in UI. And this is a loop, which means that can happen multiple times every time user does update. Uh, so I a little bit was focused on my case, but just wanted to show you what ChatGPT can do these days. Uh, so what you can do with this code is to save to your uh, repository with your code because this is also a code and as well you can take this picture and save there or just leave the code because from the code you can generate this picture uh, at any any moment so back to ChatGPT I want to say thank you ChatGPT for everything and I think it's really useful these days for people who are new to software development people who don't know for sure how it should all work so ChatGPT can help you with that I really recommend you to try it out especially model GPT-4 because it's much smarter than GPT-3.5 so if you have um, this plus ChatGPT plus plan this will be much more effective than GPT-3.5 I wanted to mention that because with GPT-3.5 you might receive not as good results and maybe you won't be as excited about that. Um, so anyway, I hope that helps you. Uh, if you like the video, put like, subscribe and uh, see you in the next one. Ciao.